Hello everyone. So, in this module, we are going to continue our discussion on Hassefort Lean Reliability Index. Uh, till date, we have solved uh, uncorrelated normal and uncorrelated non normal cases where we used equivalent linearization technique. Today, we are going to discuss how we can solve correlated cases and uh, let us see how we can develop the models for those problems. So, in the last few classes, we developed mathematical models for first order reliability method and we first defined the problem where we start with a limit state g x equal to 0. Now, once we define the problem g x equal to 0, first we convert the problem into g z equal to 0. So, we start from x and then we convert it into z, where z is the standard normal random variables. So, once we convert the problem into z space, then this g z equal to 0 is represented by this nonlinear pink line that you can see on your screen. So, any point on this pink line can be a design point. However, out of all these possibilities, obviously, the point which is the nearest to the origin is the point where we design our structure. Now, this distance is what we call beta, which is a non-dimensional number and it is called a reliability index. So, the question is how to find out this reliability index beta, that is the distance of the point which is closest to the origin in the standard normal space and for that we define our objective function which is the distance of the point z and then obviously because it satisfies the limit state there is a equality constraint gz equal to 0. Now, this constraint optimization we solve using Lagrange multiplier technique. I am not going in through the details of that derivation again. However, you are familiar with the set of equations that you can see on your screen. Now, at the end of this optimization, we get z star that is the optimal point in the standard normal space which lies on the limit surface and this z star equal to alpha i star times beta. The expression for alpha i star is also there on your screen and this is the direction cosine that is evaluated at the design point z star. Now, if we have n number of random variables in our problem statement where i equal to 1 to n, then obviously we will have n direction cosines and the property of direction cosine says that square of these alpha i and if we sum them up, that will be equal to 1. Now, this equation that you can see on your screen z star equal to alpha i star times beta, we cannot solve because we do not know what is the value of beta. And this solution is proposed iteratively using an algorithm called Rackwitz algorithm. So, what we do? We again put this z star back in the original limit state g z equal to 0. So, we get a expression in terms of alpha and beta, then we start with the initial guess and iteratively solve for beta that is the reliability index. Now, there may be different possibilities that we can encounter when we deal with random variables. There are actually four possibilities that we identified earlier and out of these four possibilities, we have already solved uncorrelated normal case where the random variables x are all normal and uncorrelated. Then, we also discussed how to extend Rackwitz algorithm for problems which are uncorrelated but non-normal. In this case, as we progress through iterative procedure, every design point that we consider in our iterative procedure, we first convert non-normal random variable into an equivalent normal random variable. Now, normal random variables has two parameter, sample mean and sample standard deviation. That is the reason if we design an equivalent normal random variable, 
we need to solve for sample mean and sample standard deviation representing that equivalent normal distribution. That we do by developing two equations where we equate probability density function and cumulative distribution function. So, using these two relations, we develop two equations and solve them to find out mu and sigma for the equivalent normal distribution that we solve at every design point and thereby we convert an uncorrelated non-normal problem into an uncorrelated normal problem through equivalent normalization. There are two more possibilities. The first one you can see on your screen that we are going to take first. So, we have correlated normal case. So, we have a set of normal random variables, but this time they are correlated and the most general case is where we have correlated non-normal case. So, we have a set of non-normal random variables which are correlated. That is the most general case. These two cases we are going to discuss today. So, let us first start with correlated normal random variables. So, we have a set of random variables x1, x2 up to xn which is represented by the capital letter X. So, these random variables are correlated but for the timing let us assume that they are following normal distribution. Now, this correlated random variables are defined by their covariance matrix and the covariance matrix you can see on your screen. So, Cx is the covariance matrix and the leading diagonal represents the variance and the off diagonal terms represents the covariance. This is a symmetric matrix. The reason is covariance between xi and xj will be equal to covariance between xj and xi. Now, once we have a set of correlated normal random variables, then to uncouple them, we use an orthogonal transformation using a relation x equal to vy. So, this capital X is the set of random variables that we have in our problem statement which are correlated normal. So, we uncorrelate them. So, we have a new set of random variables y which are uncorrelated, but the relation between these two set of random variables is x equal to vy, where this capital V represents the eigenvector of Cx, this covariance matrix. And obviously, this eigenvector we get by solving the eigenvalue problem. So, we first find out the eigenvalues of this Cx matrix and corresponding to each eigenvalue, we find out eigenvector which forms the column vectors of this matrix capital V. So, the question is what are the statistical parameters of y because once we uncorrelate them and we uh, convert the problem into an uncorrelated space, obviously this new set of random variables y must be defined by their mean and standard deviation. So, let us see how we can find out mean and standard deviation of the new random variable y. So, we have the relation between these two set of random variables x equal to vy. Now, this v is the eigenvector and the properties of v is v inverse equal to v transpose. Now, if we consider the relation between x and y which is x equal to vy, we can then express y in terms of x. So, effectively y equal to v inverse of x and v inverse is equal to v transpose. So, we have v transpose of x. Now, if we take the expectation operator on both sides of the second equation, we get expected value of y equal to expected value of v transpose x. But because v is a constant matrix, so obviously expectation operator will be applied over x. So, we have v transpose expected value of x. Now, this expected value of x which is mean of x is already given when we define the 
random variable set x1, x2 up to xn. So, we define that using their mean and covariance matrix. So, we know the mean of x that we can use in this relation to find out mean of y. So, this equation gives us mean value of y. Now, let us see how we can find out variance of y and that we can easily find out using again the same relation. So, we have c of y is equal to b transpose c of x times v. Now, this b matrix as I have already told you, we get from the eigenvalues which is lambda. So, we first find out eigenvalues and that you can see on your screen. So, the leading diagonal lambda we get from the eigen analysis of Cx matrix. So, for every lambda, we then again solve that problem, eigenvalue problem to find out the eigenvectors. So, let us see how we can adapt this. So, consider an example. So, we have two correlated normal random variables and the correlation coefficient is given that you can see it is 0.35. So, x1 and x2 are the two random variables which are normal but correlated. So, the mean and standard deviation of these random variables are given. So, x1 has a mean of 34 and standard deviation of 3.4 while x2 has a mean of 50 and standard deviation of 10. Now, our task is to uncorrelate them and then see how we can find out the new random variables y1 and y2. So, we have to find their properties. So, let us first start with the covariance matrix and in this case, we first construct the covariance matrix. The leading diagonal will be the square of this standard deviation and the off diagonal term is correlation coefficient times the two standard deviation. So, we have the covariance matrix here and then once we have the covariance matrix, our next task is to find out the eigenvalues of Cx. So, we solve the eigenvalue problem and in this case, we have a quadratic equation to solve. So, we have two roots of lambda and the two roots are 9.9868 and 101.5732. So, these are the two roots. That means, these are the two eigenvalues of Cx matrix. So, if we use the first eigenvalue, we get the first eigenvector and then similarly, the second eigenvalue, we can find out the second eigenvector and then we get this capital V matrix that you can see on your screen. So, this is the eigenvector matrix. So, using these two relations, we find out mean and covariance of y. So, mean of y as you have already derived v transpose of mean of x. So, if we apply the known values of mu x and the already derived eigenvector matrix, then we can find out mu of y that you can see it is minus 27.1536 and 54.0248. We can also find out variance of y using the relation c of y is equal to v transpose c of x times v. So, we get this variance of y you can see and in this matrix we have the leading diagonal only because in the y space the variables are uncorrelated and obviously the off diagonal terms are 0. So, we simulate this random variables using MATLAB. So, this we will discuss more when we will talk about simulation based reliability analysis, but for the time being, we can simulate this set of x1 and x2 using the properties of x1 and x2 and that you can see on your screen. So, we have this blue stars representing each set of x1 and x2. Now, because x1 and x2 are correlated, you can see a pattern that represents a correlation between x1 and x2 and then once we uncouple them and then we have 
new set of random variables y using their property also we can simulate and you can see there is no pattern shown in this new set of random variables. But for every simulated values in the x space we have a corresponding set in the y space. So we can convert the random variables from x space to y space and vice versa. Now using this relation we can now convert a correlated set of random variables into a uncorrelated set of random variables and then thereby we can also adopt the Rackwitz algorithm. We will see how to apply this Eigen analysis to solve correlated normal problems within the Rackwitz algorithm. But before that, let me update you that this Eigen analysis can be also bypassed using a more efficient technique through Cholesky decomposition. So, if we have a set of random variable x1, x2 up to xn, which are again correlated and defined by the covariance matrix, so we can adopt Cholesky decomposition again to uncouple them. So, what is the relation? The relation between x and y is in this case x equal to L times y and this L this time is a lower triangular matrix that we get from Cholesky decomposition of Cx. Obviously, Cx equal to expected value of x times x transpose and in the y space, if we take the expected value of y and y transpose, we get an identity matrix. So, this we can prove very easily. So, if we start with the definition of Cx, Cx equal to expected value of x times x transpose and in place of x, if we put the relation x equal to L times y, we get this equation expected value of Ly times Ly transpose. Then if we apply the properties of transpose, then we get this relation which is expected value of Ly times y transpose L transpose and obviously this L the lower triangular matrix, it is a constant matrix and then the moment we apply expected value of this entire quantity, the expectation operator is applied on y times y transpose. So, we get this expression where L and L transpose, they come out of this expectation operation because expectation operator is a linear operator. So, we get this relation and y times y transpose expected value of that is identity matrix. So, we get L times L transpose. So, we have Cx, the covariance matrix and that covariance matrix we decompose using Cholesky decomposition and we get this lower triangular matrix. The question is how to find out the elements of lower triangular matrix that is very simple. So, let us see how we can do that. For that, let us consider three dimensions. So, we have three cross three matrix, but we can extend this logic for any uh, number of random variables. So, we have Cx, which is equal to L times L transpose. So, L is a lower triangular matrix. So, we have the lower triangular elements. And then, if we simplify this, we get this expression. Now, by equating elements on either side, we can find out this elements of lower triangular matrix. So, the first element L11, we can find out equating this with the Cx11 and then if we go to the next element, we already know L11 from the first equation and then we can find out Cl21. Similarly, we can find out all entries of lower triangular matrix L. So, we have L equal to, you can see on your screen, the elements of L matrix we have already solved by equating this elements of L with the elements of Cx. We can generalize this and if we do that, we have Ljj can be found out from this expression and Lij for the lower triangular element, we can find out using this relation provided i greater than g. So, this is the way we solve the 
lower triangular matrix for Cholesky decomposition and once we have CX matrix we can easily find out L matrix and using that also we can uncorrelate a set of random variables. So the problem we solved in the previous slide that I leave it for you to just take it as a home task and just solve it to see whether this technique you can adapt for uncorrelating a set of random variables. Now, with that, let us see how we can adapt this eigen analysis for our reliability problem. So, we have the limit state gx equal to 0 that we first convert to gy equal to 0 where x is the correlated random variable. And then we convert x into y using this relation x equal to vy. So we start with gx equal to 0. But before we go to gz equal to 0, in this case we have an intermediate step where we first define gy equal to 0, where we use eigen analysis to convert gx equal to 0 to gy equal to 0. And in the gy equal to 0, where we have a set of random variable y which are uncorrelated normal. So that we have already discussed how to solve. So this gy equal to 0 then we can finally convert into gz equal to 0. So that is the sequence of transformation that we adapt. So we start with x that we convert to y and we have already discussed how to find out the properties of y. So, we can easily find out mu of y and sigma of y that we have already discussed. Once we find out mu of y and sigma of y, using that relation we can convert y into z. And that is how we convert gy equal to 0 into gz equal to 0. So, effectively we start from x. We have an intermediate step where we have v times y and in place of y we use this relation where we have already derived the properties of y that is mu y and sigma y and finally we get this is the transformation that directly converts x to z through an intermediate step of y. So originally our problem statement is in the x space that we first convert into y space and then finally we convert the problem into standard normal space that is gz equal to 0. So that's how the Rackwitz algorithm is modified with an intermediate step and for that we again use an Eigen analysis. This also you can solve using Cholesky decomposition. Either way you can uncorrelate a set of random variables. So we can convert gx equal to 0 to gy equal to 0 and then finally as we discussed earlier we can solve for beta that is we can solve polynomial equation using Rackwitz algorithm or we can also adopt rackwitz Whistler algorithm where we adopt newton raphson technique to find out the new design point instead of solving for beta in every iteration. So if we see the algorithm, so first what we do once we define the problem statement gx equal to 0, we first evaluate eigenvalues and eigenvectors from the covariance matrix in the x space. So once we find out eigenvectors, then we can find out the properties of uh, y. So we convert x into y through this relation and thereby we convert gx first into gy equal to 0 and then gy equal to 0 into gz equal to 0. Then once we convert the problem into gz equal to 0, we can find out the derivative as we did earlier. So we differentiate gz with respect to z and then find out capital G matrix. Then we assume initial values of alpha and beta and that is how we start the iteration. So we solve for beta and then find out the new set of design point then we express the limit state 
gz in terms of beta and alpha i and then solve for beta in every iteration and then once we get the beta we find out the g star and that's how we actually update the direction cosines and then once we find out the new direction cosines we check for convergence and then if it is converged we stop the iteration otherwise we again go back to the step 4 and then continue the iterative procedure. So let us consider an example. So again consider a cantilever beam which has two point loads as you can see on your screen and then in this case again we consider the plastic design at the support so we have the limit state which has the form x1 times x2 minus x3 times l and 0.5 x4 times l so in this format x3 and x4 you can easily conclude that they represent uh, this p1 and p2 the two loads acting on the cantilever beam so we have four random variables in this case x1 x2 x3 and x4 and the properties of these random variables are given you can see on your screen and the two loads we have p1 and p2 which are represented by x3 and x4 these two random variables they have a correlation coefficient and in this case it is 0 0.6 so our task is to find out reliability index and obviously the probability of failure so we first start with the covariance matrix in this case only x3 and x4 they are correlated so we have these two of diagonal terms correlating x3 and x4 and then recall we convert x into y using the relation x equal to v times y so we solve the eigenvalue problem and then the eigenvalues in this case we get are four eigenvalues you can see on your screen so these are represented by lambda and for every lambda we can find out eigenvector so we have also eigenvectors in this case now once we have these eigenvalues and eigenvectors we can use them to find out the parameters of the new random variable y so let us continue so we have lambda and v and that we adopt to find out the properties of y that you can see on your screen this we have already discussed so using uh, the relation x equal to vy we can find out the mean and standard deviation of the new set of random variables y so now we have y and then we convert x to y and then finally uh, into standard normal space so we start with gx equal to 0 and then uh, we get gy equal to 0 and then from gy equal to 0 we get gz equal to 0 using that relation we have already discussed so we start with the initial guess of alpha i and beta and then continue the iteration and that you can see on your screen so in this problem we have four iterations so at the end of fourth iteration the problem converged and then in this case again we use a uh, stopping criteria based on reliability index in two successive iterations and the allowable error is 0 0.001 so using this tolerance we solve the problem and we obtain the design point that you can see so these are the four values of uh, random variables in the standard normal space and then that's the uh, MPP and once we find out MPP we can find out beta in this case beta is 2.6615 so after fourth iteration we can find out PF in this case pf equal to phi of minus 2.6615 and which is equal to 3.8898 to the power minus 3 so 
at the end we have to find out the design point that also we can find out from the values of y we can convert to x and in the x space you can see the design point where we design the problem so that's how we solve for correlated normal random variables so the final case where we have correlated non normal case there what we do we combine all these problems so the models that we developed for uncorrelated normal then uncorrelated non normal through equivalent normalization and then finally if we have correlation then we have to adopt eigen analysis or cholesky decomposition to uncorrelate them so once we combine all three we get the solution for the final case where we have correlated non normal random variables and that's the most general case so we consider again the same beam problem and in this case gx equal to x1 times x2 minus 1140 this we considered from haldar mahadevan's book so let us see if we solve this problem what uh, um, value of reliability index that we get so in this case we consider correlation coefficient is 0.8 so we have the properties of random variables you can see and in this case x1 is following normal distribution while x2 is following log normal distribution so let us see the solution will follow the same step we start with gx equal to 0 that we convert into gy equal to 0 and finally gy equal to 0 we convert it into gz equal to 0 and for that again we have two sets of transformation so first we uncorrelate the correlated random variables and then once we uncorrelate we get the y space and then y we convert into z using this relation so in this case we have two random variables so we have alpha initial as 0.7071 and beta initial as usual we consider it to be 3 so we get z initial that is 2.1210 with the same values for z1 and z2 so we start with the covariance matrix in this case again cx is the covariance matrix that we can construct using sigma x and the correlation coefficient and then we do the eigen analysis the moment we solve the eigen values we get two eigen values because we have two random variables so these two values are 1.9122 and 19.8178 and then we find out eigen vectors corresponding to each eigen values and the complete description of v you can see on your screen so we have eigen vectors using this relation we can find out the properties of y so the mean value of y you can see on your screen it is minus 24.3434 and minus 61.3792 also we find out sigma y using this eigen vector so and this sigma y in this case is 1.3282 and 4.4517 now we can express x1 and x2 using y1 and y2 because the relation between x and y is x equal to by so using this relation we can express x1 and x2 in terms of y1 and y2 so now if we put this expression for x1 and x2 into the original expression of gx equal to 0 we can find out gy of 0 that you can see on your screen and then y1 and y2 again we know the mean and standard deviation of y1 and y2 that you can use to convert y1 and y2 into z1 and z2 so the expression for y1 and y2 again if we put back in this equation gy equal to 0 we get gz equal to 
So this is the final expression for gz equal to 0 and once we get the expression for gz equal to 0, we can find out the derivative of gz equal to 0 with respect to z1 and z2 and that's what you can see on your screen. So once these expressions are obtained, we can now start our iterative procedure. So we again start with z initial which is because alpha initial is same for alpha 1 and alpha 2 and beta equal to 3 we have same values for z initial. So we have z1 and z2 their initial values that we can again use to find out the values of y initial which you can see on your screen and then at this point because we have one log normal distribution we can find out the equivalent normal parameters. So you can see that equivalent normal parameters on your screen. And then using this equivalent normal parameters, we then continue our iterations. So using these parameters, we find out the final value of alpha at the end of this iteration. So we get the final values of alpha. So alpha 1 is 0 0.0397 and the alpha 2 is minus 0 0.9992. And then using this value again, we can find out z final, which is 0 0.1542 and minus 3.8805. And the iteration continues. We adopt a stopping criteria. And this continues for ninth iteration. And at the end of ninth iteration, we get the solution for beta, which is equal to 2.6757. And then we can use this to find out probability of failure which is pf and pf equal to phi of minus beta and if we do that we get 0.0037 as the probability of failure in this case where we have two random variables x1 and x2 one is following normal distribution another is following log normal distributions and both of them are correlated with a correlation coefficient of 0.8 and then finally we can find out the design point in this case the design point where actually we have to design this problem for safety so xd is in this case 47.9198 and second value of xd is 60.5895 so let us consider a different example where we have a column it is a steel column and it has axial force and moment. So the GX you can see on your screen where we have four random variables. So the cross section is given that is 6496 millimeter square and the plastic section modulus is 678700 millimeter cube and we have four random variables in this case and the dead loads and the moment corresponding to dead load they follow log normal distributions all other random variables are normal so we again start the problem in this case again we follow the same conversion so we start with x that we convert to y and then we convert y into z so we have our initial guess of alpha because we have five random variables in this case the value of alpha is 0 0.447472 and the initial value of beta is 3 obviously these two we can use to find out z initial which in this case is 1.3416 so we start the iteration we again find out intermediate point y so in this problem, we have two variables you can see on your screen which are uh, non-normal. So um, second variable and the fourth variable uh, in the list are following log normal distribution and not only that, they also have correlation uh, and the correlation coefficients you can see on your screen. 
So, for this case, first we have to uncorrelate them and for that uh, we solve the eigenvalue problem. So, you can see the eigenvalues on your screen and for each eigenvalue we solve eigenvectors and the eigenvectors in this case also you can see on your screen. So, using this eigenvector we are going to uncouple the uh, variables and then uh, once we uncouple them, so uh, we are in y space and then from y space we actually convert them to z space and then uh, we are in standard normal space and then we can follow the algorithm that we have already developed. So, we start with our initial guess and in this case again uh, our initial value of beta is 3 and because we have 5 random variables the initial values of alpha you can see and with that we continue our uh, iteration and after fourth iteration uh, we stop the iterative procedure because it satisfies the criteria that we uh, follow in this iterative procedure. So, once we uh, are well within the tolerance limit, we stop the iteration and then uh, that helps us to identify the most probable point of failure. Now, in this case, we can identify the MPP that you can see uh, on your screen. So, in the Z space, we have identified them and then based on these values, we can estimate the reliability index and in this case, it is 3.7963. Now, after fourth iteration, our task is to find out the probability of failure and in this case it is 7.34 into 10 to the power minus 5. Not only that, at the end of this iterative procedure, we are supposed to find out the design point. So, we convert this z variables into first y and then from y, we get back the design point in the x space and those points you can see on your screen x1 to x5 are uh, the values that we get from this iterative procedure are reported uh, in the table. So, these are the uh, values for which we design the structure and once we design that we can achieve a probability of failure which is in this case 7.34 into 10 to the power minus 5. So, with that uh, our discussion on Hassoffer lean reliability index comes to uh, the end. In our next module, we will see how we can uh, implement these models in MATLAB. With that, uh, let us close here. Uh, we will meet again in the next week. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.